Too Real for TV exclusive. 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 So early Saturday morning, I get a call from my man, Shaw Brown, who is a brilliant photographer. He tells me about an idea for a shoot he wanted me to assist him with at a barbershop. I was really tired from the night before, but since I was in desperate need of a haircut, I decided to grab all my gear, grab my personal security and bodyguard, and roll out. Our destination was Unfatable Masters Barbershop. Well, I met a barber by the name of D.P. Taylor for the first time. A really cool dude with a pretty interesting story to tell and some big goals for the future. That nigga got green eyes. That's her. <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, you know, like From I said. Louisiana. Yeah, Louisiana, man. Northeast. You know, I represent I-20, man. It's a big difference in North Louisiana and South, man. It's like two different states, man. We all sound you want to become a barber, man? Actually, uh, uh, really pushing my own hairline back, man. You know, my mama wasn't blessed with the finer things. It, I was getting haircuts like once every two months. So I had to get in the mirror and kind of learn it myself, you know. She bought some clippers, and that's how it all started for me, pushing my own hairline back. And I mean, I went through it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get talked so bad about Try to keep the beard as high as possible. Okay. You feel me? I got you. Like, don't bring it too low. I got you. I got you. I mean, I mean, yeah, man, that's what uh, made me pick them up, man. But um, really, uh, I, 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 get, I, I really got to pay homage to a lady by one of my god sisters by the name of Vera, man. Vera stayed down the street from when I was 17. And uh, she had five boys, man. And she just wanted their haircut. And I was just so anxious to get it and do right. it. And I, whether I messed it up or not, she always told me it looked good, you know what I mean? And that, that really was like my, my, my uh, foundation for uh, cutting. And every week I would cut them boys up, man. Shout out to Vera Nation, man. They, they really showed me love in the beginning. What makes a good barber a good barber? Uh, patience, consistency, you know what I mean? And um, uh, never uh, 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 stop learning. I mean, you never, uh, it's an everyday... It's an everyday learning experience with these clippers. Every time you turn them on, you should be learning something new. You know what I mean? So, consistency, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah, he dipped in my boy too, he cut him up too. <laughs> I was looking at the size. I ain't want to say nothing because you don't never want to crush their dreams of being a barber, man. You always want to. <laughs> <laughs> he stopped rapping. Don't say that on camera, man. <laughs> They gonna, hey, they gonna have you cutting everybody homeless on this side. And I'm proud of. But yeah, man, um, that, that that that's pretty much where it uh, began for me, man. But a good barber man is detail. You know, you gotta stay on it. You know, the day you stop cutting, whether you take a week off or you behind. You know what I mean? So it's like it's like any any and every other thing that you do. You said you've been cutting for what, eight years, twelve years? Yeah, about a, I, well, I'm in eleven year, going on the twelfth year. So what's your plan to do after? What's what's your what's your goal? Well, right now, man, right now I'm I'm trying to get into the schooling of it because the money is not what I'm chasing. What I'm chasing is the success. And in this business, in order to be considered successful and reach your plateau, you only can cut so many cuts in the barber chair. You gotta move beyond the barber chair to get it. You know what I mean? And um, my, 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 my dream is to own a few barber schools, you know, cause that right there is- Barber schools? Yeah, barber, barber schools. Shops. No, no, schools. barber schools. There ain't no money in barber shop ownership. Actually, it's debt. I mean, cause we don't own the land in the building. You know what I mean? So it's just a lease, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, um, if you're talking real estate in this business, you, gonna, you wanna be the profiteer. You wanna own the land and the building. That's where the money at. Everything else is pretty much an endemic thing, you know. But anyway, uh, like I was saying, you know, to make it to where you feel like you made it in this, 
you got to move to the schooling, man. You got to move to the school and get them departments of education grants. You know, we're talking 15, 20,000 a student. You know what I mean? When every barber school only taking about 1,000 to 2,000 to even use towards one student. So you do the math on that when you fill up a classroom of 20 to 25 students. You know, and then from there, um, you move into the products. You move into merchandising and products. And you know, that vast, you know, I mean, that, that right there in itself is, is, is millions. You know, if you can really make a product that sell or, or make a, a grease or, 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 or even a brush, a comb, anything. You know, residual income. You know, I want to be one day be able to sit at home and know that my barbershop uh, uh, knowledge and, and skills is being um, brought back around, you know what I mean, without me having to work or do it. For men, a barbershop is our spa and country club. It's a place where the common man can seek refuge away from the problems of the world, the stress of home and family. And here, the man has an opportunity to get pampered a place where a man can quickly pick up a boost of confidence. Personally, I try my best to stick with my barber. You build a relationship with the barber that cuts your hair. I mean, if a guy's going to put a straight razor to your face and neck, you better trust him. But since this was my first time at the swanky, unfatable master's barbershop, I had to pick a random barber for the first time. Usually I go with the barber with the longest wait, meaning he must be good. But since I was here working on a video shoot, I decided to go with the loudest guy in the room. Why? I figured the guy with the big personality would at least look good on camera and give me some good footage, even if the cut was bad. The barber I chose was D.P. Taylor, and the VIP treatment was top flight. A brother even came in delivering food. I ordered two delicious fish sandwiches, a bowl of fruit, and a bean pie. And even while I ate, this brother D.P. Taylor maintained his professionalism and continued to do his job. I don't know if it was because of my films that he may have seen, but whatever it was, I was grateful. Personally, I wouldn't have the patience to deal with a guy like me. I'm going to let him eat his fish sandwich, man. He loves that fish sandwich, man. So, you know, I'm just waiting, I'm just waiting for the process of his daughter to illuminate, man. And uh, we're going to wash that thing out and continue up with the shake. I'm going to polish him off, man. I'm going to give him that real sharpness, man. But that is what you call excellent customer service. To say I was impressed is an understatement. The environment was friendly and peaceful for all ages, yet hip and enjoyable. A cool place to go get professionally groomed. Surprisingly, as I sat in his chair, the jokes ended, and I realized I was in the hands of a very serious professional. He spoke about cutting hair like it was an art form, comparing it to a painter or a carpenter. This was a guy that was truly dedicated to his craft. He spoke like a philosopher of the barber world. And I was meticulously groomed by the brother DP. He handled the straight razor with the same precision of a samurai with his sword. Not one mistake or cut. His work was indeed artwork.
He did such an excellent job grooming me that I was no longer tired from the night before. I felt refreshed and rejuvenated. My skin felt clearer. The hairs in my beard felt healthy. I felt how a man is supposed to feel, confident and ready to take over the world. After all, isn't that why we go to a barbershop? Yo, thought I would just make an update on the beard. Man, this is the day after, after taking a nice hot shower. You can see all the dyes removed from the skin. So, it looks nice and natural and fresh. Cool little bottle of Beijing. You know, sometimes players say, hey, man, don't let the chick see you dyeing your hair. Hey, man, she dyed her hair. I ain't tripping over that. And then somebody, some of the OGs will say, hey, man, you should be proud of them gray hairs. No. I don't want to be proud of them yet. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. But there you go. Shouts out to D.P. Taylor, Master Barber. Too Real for TV. If you're interested in having your shopper service featured with professional video production, contact Too Real for TV.com or call us at 702 806 4880. Too Real for TV.com.